Uh, remaining here on set, Newsmax TV's Francesca Page. Francesca, good to have you here. And we are joined via telephone uh, by two ladies who may take exception to Michelle Obama's curious fundraising line. Miriam Weaver and Amy Jo Clark are the co-founders of thechicksontheright.com. They're also the authors of the new book, Right for a Reason, Life, Liberty, and a Crapload of Common Sense. And ladies, as we get a look at your book cover, we'll turn first to you, Miriam. What is your take on Michelle Obama and her fundraising comments? She and her husband both seems to be, seem to be having these pot meat kettle moments. Yeah, so can you hear me okay? We can, we can hear you just fine. Okay, well, I mean, I think it just speaks to the fact that there's a complete disconnect from reality in this administration to what you know, what regular Americans are feeling and experiencing in, in this regular everyday life. So it, it's just one more example, and the, and the examples are unfortunately endless, of how the Obamas, um, you know, they don't exactly walk their talk. Ladies, we also want to talk about a recent CNN poll that shows if asked today the majority of voters would pick Romney over Obama for presidents. Are we seeing here some bias remorse? I, do they do this to make our hearts hurt? Is that why they do this? <laughs> Seriously. Um, well, you know, we see this and we, we want to look at people and go, we told you so, you know? And I think the reason that what we hear that the reason that Romney lost is because of that one big comment about the 47%. Right. And, um, you know, he really didn't say anything that wasn't true. And a lot of things that we're hearing that Romney said during the campaign have come true. And it wasn't really anything that was, you know, these great predictions or anything. It was just stuff that was common sense, which a lot of people, uh, what, we're, we're no, what, we're, what we're seeing is that common sense is just not that common anymore, really. But, um, you know, when we, when we see the Romney name floating around for 2016, it makes us all wonder, is he going to run again? And then what we talk a lot about on our blog, um, on our website, and with the, the folks that come and, and join us in our community, is are, are we going to see more recycled candidates? And that worries us a little bit, because we're, we're really not sure if that's necessarily what we want for 2016. We're hoping to see fresher, um, fresher names, new candidates, and, and names which haven't yet been tarnished by the liberal media. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, and I, I, I got a kick out of your plaintive uh, question there. Are, are, they, are they doing this to make our hearts hurt? But ladies, you seem to uh, be thinking with your heads, not only your hearts, when you talk about the dangers of Mitt Romney and a recycled candidate. For example, uh, Amy Jo, in that same uh, poll, Romney was pitted against Hillary Clinton uh, for the 2016 election, and in the scenario offered by the pollster, Hillary Clinton beats Romney by over 10 points. So the question becomes, you ladies were mentioning some who have not yet arrived on the scene. I think about Indiana, if I'm not mistaken, that's what the place you call home. Mitch Daniels, yep. a successful run as governor. My old house colleague, Mike Pence, mentioned as a dark horse candidate for president. Uh, will Indiana turn out a national candidate over the next couple of years? You know, we would. it would be awesome if, if somebody like a Mitch Daniels would run. I don't think that that's ever going to happen. I think, you know, she cried for three days when <laughs> he decided not to run. It's true. It, but uh, Mike Pence, we, we've, we've heard that that is a possibility. You never know. He, it, it could happen. Um, there are some other ones that, you know, the people that have been floating around a little bit, like the Rand Pauls and the Ted Cruz's and people like that, that are somewhat new. They're not yet completely tarnished, but we people have been seeing more and more of them that, that we've been seeing cropping up, the, the newer people. But then we see people like the Michelle Bachmans and the Rick Santorums and those people who have run before who are saying, you know, I'd, I'd probably do it again. And we wonder how how well they would do in a 2000 in the 2016 race so you know I I don't know I'm not sure if if anybody can beat Hillary at this point we're, we're just not sure because she is a force to be reckoned with just like Obama was in 2008 and 2012 because he was the first black 
president, and and Hillary will be the first woman president. So that is such a force, and so we need somebody that is so strong. I mean, just so so powerful when it comes to the GOP. It's it's got to be somebody that is not just you know halfway. Well, well, ladies, as you mentioned, uh, Hillary's. Uh, posture and uh, the fact that she's a woman and uh, you are the chicks on the right, uh, does there need to be a woman on the Republican ticket in 2016? We would, you know, we would welcome that. We would absolutely relish that idea if there was a good contender on the GOP side. I, you know, I think for us, it's just, it's very frustrating to see that Hillary does still poll so well because it it's as, as Democrats have proven time and again, it almost doesn't matter how much someone screws up on their side, yep. they become more popular as a result. And so that's really frustrating, but I think the key for whoever our candidate is on the GOP ticket, they have to have the ability to um, express themselves forcefully and, and, and unafraid, because the, the, the problem I think with Mitt Romney was that he was so nice. And people didn't. People saw him as this slick businessman who didn't necessarily always fight back really strongly against the criticisms that were leveled against him. So, and, and that niceness. What happened was the liberal media took that niceness and they turned it into we're going to demonize him. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did. And that's they're going to do that with every single candidate. So they we got to be ready mm -hmm. for that. Now, ladies, I want to ask you, we know that, that Congress is preparing to start a five-week break at the end of next week, and there's still areas of serious unrest here on our border and overseas in the Middle East and other regions. Is this really the best time to be going on vacation? No. <laughs> no. I, it's so not, but I, does he care? <laughs> I mean, does he care? Well, and the thing is, is, you know, I can't speak to what the, the break rules are, but it seems to me that if your country is falling apart at the seams, literally, which is what's happening at our border, that perhaps their schedule could be rearranged. I mean, come on. But I don't think that he, I don't think he has any sense of that, though. I mean, I honestly just don't think that he, he cares. Obama? As yeah, I don't think Obama cares at this point. It's, the optics don't even matter him anymore because it's it's like Miriam was saying before. You know, with with Democrats, they give such a pass for bad behavior that this would never fly if it was George W. It just would have never flown this sort of behavior. And with Obama, he gets such a pass after pass after pass that this is just okay. I mean, it's totally okay for him to take a vacation when the world is literally falling apart. Amy Jo, you're mentioning, of course, the 15 days the president is supposed to be spending uh, uh, starting, I guess, next week in Martha's Vineyard. Also, there's a yes, congressional sir. break. Uh, yeah, part of it is vacation, but there are campaigns going on as well with all 435 seats up in the House of Representatives. Miriam, let me get you to weigh in. I love the title of a book, and I know you can't judge a book by its cover. Dr. Franklin <laughs> warned us about that, but this title, Right for a Reason, Life, Liberty, and a Crap Load of Common Sense. Is, is that the slogan of you two chicks on the right? Actually, no. I mean, if you look at our website, our tagline that we've had for the last five and a half years is conservatism needs a makeover. And that is a theme that is part of this book. But this book is really about, um, it's a reminder, really, to conservatives about why it's right to be conservative. And the reason it's right is because of that subtitle, because all of the things that are, are conservative principles, life, liberty, and common sense, are central to what makes conservatism right. And so that's what we want. It's really kind of like a pep rally in book form because we're frustrated and we know a lot of other conservatives out there are frustrated and especially the ones who may not feel like they belong to the party anymore because perhaps they feel a little bit more relaxed about some social issues or they just don't feel heard. And so really we wrote this book to appeal to them but also to people who are independent and kind of on the fence about where they might fit in to show them that not every conservative fits into this old, stodgy, white guy mold. And uh, we will have to leave it at that. Uh, I don't think I'm a stodgy white guy. Maybe I'm getting older at any rate. <laughs> uh, Miriam Weaver and Amy Jo Clark, we thank you for your time and uh, your conservative thoughts on your new book, Right for a Reason. Thanks so much. Good to talk to you. Thank you.
Appreciate it. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this? We'd love to get your comments. Tweet them to us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.